Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 1992, the topic is Mindset and the title is Neurological Programming, the Need for Neutrality. What I want to talk about today is a healthy mindset that we should have when approaching our goals. This would be a mindset we could use for life, (laughs) but specifically if we're approaching goals towards, you know, fat loss, building muscle, building strength, whatever it might be in the fitness realm, there's a pro and con to being too positive, to being too negative, and the best mindset is often a mindset of neutrality. If you think of being overly negative, that's pretty obvious. People are like, of course you don't want to be negative. Uh, Some of the reasons why is if we're negative, we tend to devalue small progress. If somebody went through a whole week and they're like, I did great this week. Uh, I only lost 0.1 pounds of body weight. They could say, you know, what the hell is the point of point one? Who cares? I did this whole week's worth of work and that was worthless. <laughs> and then they quit. Now, we, we don't want to judge weight loss or fat loss simply on a week-to-week basis. You want to look at four-week trends. I've talked about that before. There's a lot of reasons why body weight fluctuates per day. So a 0.1 fluctuation is so completely random that we wouldn't want to judge all of everything we're doing (laughs) off of uh, like a day-to-day kind of movement or a a 0.1 movement. Uh, But that is often the case is if I look over four-week trends and say my goal is to lose about one pound per week. Now that's, that's pretty pretty good adherence. It requires a lot of adherence. It requires things to be very purposeful, but that's certainly possible, one pound per week. The first week I might only, like, maybe I'll lose 1.2 because there's like water weight loss and we're getting into healthy habits. Uh, So maybe we lose 1.2. Then the next week we lose 0.8. The following week it's 0.1. Then the next week it's it's 0.8 again. We look and say, okay, overall my trend, I'm, I'm pretty close. Maybe I can tighten up some adherence because I'm a little short of that one pound per week goal. Tighten up some adherence, maybe fine tune some numbers. Uh, Maybe I'm eating too late at the end of the day, so my weight tends to be heavier in the morning than what it really is. So I have some modifications to make. But that trending sequence isn't abnormal to be 1.8, then, I mean, 1.2, then 0.8, then 0.1, then 0.8. But after that 0.1 week, if you're overly negative and you're just like everything, everything is, you're waiting to see basically. When you're over negative, you're waiting to see things that are wrong. You're focused on everything being wrong. You're almost expecting failure. So when you see point one loss, you would say that's worthless, right? Like you had a 1.2, then a 0.8, and now only a 0.1. Ugh, like nothing's working. This is trash. I might as well quit or try something different. Well, you actually did lose. (laughs) Point one is still a loss. (laughs) Like if your goal is to lose weight, it's still a loss. You still actually made progress. Yes, it wasn't as much as you wanted, but it was actually still progress. So you're about to throw everything away when it's actually working the way you want. In total, you've already lost over two pounds in just three weeks. That's that's not bad. I mean, that's starting to get things moving. And it's unlikely that you were 100% accurate to the diet anyhow (laughs) in three weeks. Uh, People kind of forget that part of it. You know, I've been following this diet. I've only lost three pounds. Or I've been following this diet. I've only lost two pounds. Well, you ain't actually been following the diet. <laughs> we, You know, you might have had five good days the first week, four good days the second week, and only three good days the third week, and yet you think you're following the diet. Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. If you're following the diet, you're following the diet. If you're not following the diet, you're not following the diet. So if you're on the diet and within the parameters of the diet, so I have my clients, I tell them you're not perfect, no one has to be perfect in order to make progress, but let's aim for 10 out of 14 days. So every two weeks we would like to have 10 good days, meaning we're within the calorie range that we have, the protein target, and the usually the sugar target that we have, and then the distribution of our calories and protein throughout the day. We want to be 
in the ballpark of those numbers, <laughs> uh, 10 out of 14 days. So for my clients, calories, I give them a range. And this will be true for muscle building and strength as well, as well as athletic performance. I work with a lot of people for various reasons. But calories, we're never looking at a single number. We're looking at a range always. Protein is always a range, not a single number. And sugars, we're looking for an upper limit. Like don't go over, you know, X. Whether it's 60 grams a day, 100 grams a day, whatever it might be for that client. Don't go over that number. Then for distribution, we want to be close to thirds. Uh, for a third of my calories of protein in the first third of the day, a third of my calories of protein in the second third of the day, a third of my calories of protein in the final third of the day. If we're in that ballpark of the thirds, and then we have our calories within the range, protein within the range, and sugar under the top end limit, we're great. We'll call that a successful day. And that's, that's a very hard thing to do when you're first new to things, but eventually that becomes a way of life and it's actually something you can do on a regular basis all the time but 10 out of 14 days is successful in my mind so if somebody's telling me you know hey i'm not seeing what i expect to see in the diet i would look to see have we been adherent at least 10 out of 14 days if they haven't been then i would say you know don't judge the diet yet we haven't even been following it <laughs> so 10 out of 14 in my mind is the minimum you need to say that you're following the diet. If you've only had four out of seven days within the diet parameters, then you're not actually following the diet. So maybe you had calories correct on five out of seven, but protein wasn't good on two out of those five, and then the sugar's been scattered, the distribution's been scattered, but you have felt the pressure of the diet every day. The pressure of the diet means nothing. It's whether you actually follow the diet, that's what actually matters. So you can have the intention of the diet, that who gives a shit, <laughs> uh, that isn't going to produce any outcome, right? So it's actually the actions that we have. It's what we actually do that produces outcome. Therefore, in that example, is if somebody's a constant negative mindset and they're devaluing small progress, they might think the first week was success, 1.2 pounds. The second week, 0.8, they're like, oh, I'm a loser, I failed, I didn't make the progress that I wanted, which was one pound per week. Well, again, one pound per week might be an average that we're looking for. It's not going to be the literal outcome each single week. What this means, and what we want to get away from in a negative mindset, is that there's this uh, it's all or nothing mindset. And that small progress means no progress. Just because you lost 0.8 instead of 1 pound doesn't mean you should quit. Just because you lost 0.1 pound rather than 1 pound doesn't mean you should quit. You just got to figure out what was different. And then also recognize that the body is different in the way it responds from week to week, especially females with uh, menstrual cycles. You're going to have uh, variable weight loss uh, you're going to see some weeks where it plateaus or even kind of goes up a point, like point something pounds, and then all of a sudden the next week you lose way over the average. So menstrual cycle is going to cause some fluctuations. And then for men, there's fluctuations as well uh, related to a lot of things, can be hormonal, but also can be, you know, whether you had sodium, different sodium intake, different water intake, different activity levels, uh, different types of foods. They'll have different digestion rates. Maybe some has more fiber, some has less fiber. Maybe you haven't gone to the bathroom. Maybe you have gone to the bathroom. Uh, there's a lot of fluctuations of, of why progress isn't 100% consistent. So if I'm looking for a pound per week on average, the literal is at, like on average is the key part there is you have to look over the span of, say, you know, 8, 12, 16, 20 weeks. What is the average? That's what you're looking for. But when you have an overly negative mindset, you tend to devalue small progress. You'll see a week as 0.8 loss rather than one pound as a failure, and you'll quit. This, this is an extreme reason why people don't seem to have long-term success with a negative mindset is because they look for every excuse to quit. And that's actually part of the overly negative mindset as well, is that failure feels like an option because it feels inevitable. You'll accept failure much more readily than you will uh, if you had a positive or a neutral mindset. Then also, a negative mindset, people tend to be problem-focused rather than solution-focused. We tend to look at everything that's going wrong and just dwell on it rather than trying to solve it. 
So an overly negative mindset we know is not helpful. However, an overly positive mindset can also be detrimental. How so? (laughs) Uh, We can become permissive of bad habits. We tend to excuse away our mistakes. So I'm saying that somebody needs to be adherent 10 out of 14 days. Maybe they got, uh, maybe they had 10 out of 14 on calories and 10 out of 14 on protein, but they weren't the same 10. So maybe really they only had eight days that they actually hit all of the targets, but they had two days that calories were good, but protein wasn't. And then two days, you know, maybe the protein was, but calories weren't. So they'll say, oh, you know, well, uh, I know I only got 8 out of 14 really with the full targets, but I actually got 10 out of 14 with my calories and 10 out of 14 with my protein, so I'm actually doing really good. That's, that's bad. That's detrimental because if you leave that sensation, if you leave that process, that analyzation with I'm doing okay, you're not going to change anything. So if you were actually only 8 out of 14 that week, you're going to be again 8 out of 14 or again suboptimal the next week because you didn't have any desire to change anything. You didn't make a plan to change anything. If you said, okay, that's fine, that's good, I'm okay, I'm doing well, and then you just don't change anything, you're not going to get a change, therefore nothing's going to improve. I see this all the time with clients. Is they'll, you know, they'll kind of tell themselves, uh, and it doesn't always come across in like online journals and stuff, but it comes across in the way they discuss and other things and the like overall general communication is they tend to be okay with subpar performance. Meaning they might have a week that's only, maybe they only got three good days out of seven. And maybe there's a special event. You know, a birthday, maybe they were sick for a day or two. There, Whatever the reason was, there was something that was legitimate as to why that week kind of didn't go well. But they don't bounce back the next week. There's not, there's not this hunger, this desire to crush the next week to make up for that bad week. They'll go from a 3 out of 7 to just a 4 out of 7 or a 5 out of 7. And a 5 out of 7 is okay, but... There's not this this fight that says, well, last week was three out of seven. I know it was because of the birthday. I know it was because I was sick. I know it was because of this. But screw that. I'm going to come back this week and try to be seven out of seven so I can balance that out and actually come back and crush this thing. That's what I want to see. <laughs> That's the, what the successful people do is they bounce back with, with fire, with fight. They're not just passive when they come back. They don't accept a second week of mediocrity. But if we're overly positive and we excuse away mediocrity, we stay mediocre. And that could be detrimental to success. Being overly positive in that same way allows for slow progress. Because, well, you know, I'm making progress. Yeah, but could you be making better progress? If you're okay with some progress, okay. But... There's a season of life where some progress is great because you have a lot of craziness going on, a lot of stress going on. But then there are seasons of life where you probably could be pushing harder. And it would be helpful for us to be aware of that and to ask more of ourselves in those seasons. But if we're overly positive and we say, hey, any progress is good progress, we tend to just stay in this kind of so-so effort and getting so-so results. And things are slow. If things are slow, that eventually starts to wear on you. You eventually start to say, wow, I've been spending a lot of time and not getting a lot of results. And that can be demotivating and that can actually cause you to quit. Another reason why being overly positive is actually detrimental is motivation is easily destroyed. If you're overly positive, you tend to think like everything's going to work out. Everything's going to be okay. But... That's not life. (laughs) Unfortunately, and as much as I wish it wasn't true, that's not life. Life is not always okay. Life has some shitty moments. Life has some tough things that we go through. And if you believe that everything is going to be perfect, then when it's inevitably not, we tend to feel destroyed by that, feel crushed by that. We tend not to be able to pivot and make changes. Because we didn't expect any other outcome than perfection, we're not prepared to process 
mentally and emotionally process any outcome other than per- perfection. So having an overly negative mindset we know isn't helpful. Having an overly positive mindset also isn't helpful. So what's the right mindset? As you can tell from the title, <laughs> is a neutral mindset, the need for neutrality. Uh, I know uh, someone in my life hates the, the next phrase I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it anyhow. Um, the quote, it is what it is. That's actually a, a pretty good quote when you're explaining a neutral mindset. Is It is what it is. If something happens to you, it's not more than that. It's not less than that. It just is what it is. If I missed my calories today, I missed my calories today. Oh, well. I'm going to come back tomorrow and I'm going to get my calories right. If I miss my calories today, it doesn't mean I'm a piece of shit. (laughs) And I'm destined to fail forever. And I'm a loser. No, it just, I missed my calories for a day. Oh, well. (laughs) Like, I'm going to come back tomorrow and I'm going to be fine. I'm going to hit my calories. I'm okay. (laughs) Not a piece of crap, you know. So I'm probably being very aggressive, but that's actually quite like that's quite literally how a lot of people think. <laughs> so I don't want to sugarcoat it too much. But if you miss a day, you just miss a day. Oh well, like come on, like you're fine. There's gonna be a lot of days in your life, hopefully, knock on wood. <laughs> but one of them ain't gonna make or break you. You know, you've had a lot of bad days before. You've had a lot of good days before, and here you are. Uh, you you know, so we can we can continue. Life will move on. <laughs> but if you have a bad day, you have a bad day. It is what it is. Uh, you just kind of move on. That's it. Like, it is what it is, you know. So you have a bad workout, you had a bad workout. Doesn't mean every workout's going to be bad. Doesn't mean you're destined to have bad workouts forever. It just, it just doesn't mean more than what it is. It just is what it is. That's very helpful to have a neutral mindset. One of the benefits of a neutral mindset is is we tend to stay in an action-based mindset. Meaning we recognize we can't control everything, but we can not control some things, so I might as well control the hell out of those things. (laughs) So a neutral mindset is just you do what you can do. I can't do everything, but I can do something, so let me just focus on the something. I'm going to do what I can do. I I can't control what I can't control, so therefore I'm not going to let it control what I can control. I'm going to keep focused on the things I can do, make progress in those areas. It will make progress in the bigger scheme of things towards my goal, and I'll figure it out as I go. If I run into a new problem, I'll figure that out. I can't predict all of the problems ahead of time. I just kind of got to go with it as I go. And a neutral mindset maintains that type of proactive mindset. I'm going to do what I can do today, If something comes up tomorrow, I'll deal with that tomorrow. But today, I'm going to do what I can with what I know how to do. We also have a more motivating mindset when we have a neutral mindset. Because you're solution-focused. If something comes up, you're like, oh, crap, geez, what was that? (laughs) Let me figure that out. Let me try to figure out a solution for that. I didn't see that coming. But you're just like, yeah, it came. It had an impact. Let me figure out what I can do about that. And the next time it comes, I'll be a little more prepared. That's it. Just, like, it's just, it's like emotional Kevlar. <laughs> Bulletproof, you know. Uh, when you get hit, you go, huh, that stunk. Uh, let me learn what I can, and I'll move on. <laughs> but it's not like if I got hit that I'm forever ruined for life. <laughs> right? But it's also not believing that you're never going to get hit. When you start a diet and you're like, I'm going to be perfect. Bullshit. Absolutely not. Don't even dare try that because it's going to rock your world when the first mistake happens. But if you also start a diet going, well, I don't even know why I'm bothering to start a diet. Diets don't work for me. Uh, Good luck. This one isn't going to work either because you're looking for it not to work. Right? Neutral mindsets are always helpful uh, because... It also, neutral mindsets value small progress, which, hint, hint, is all progress. All progress we make is slow as shit. (laughs) It's miserably slow, but that's just the way it is. I can't gain 20 pounds of muscle in one day. I can't gain 20 pounds of strength in one day. can't lose 20 pounds of fat in one day. All progress is slow. 
So you have to learn to value small progress because all progress is slow. What you want to look and see is, is there a measure of progress? Yes? Awesome. Let me keep going. I'm not quantifying it. I'm just saying, is there progress? Yes. Okay, let me keep going. Do, do I want more progress? Okay. If I want more, what can I do more? If I want more, I have to do more to create the more, right? The more doesn't come from nothing. So if I want more, I got to do more. Do I have capacity to do more? Yes, no. If yes, figure out what it is, and now you can expect more. If no, then you better be okay with what you're getting, because if you can't put more in, you're not going to get more, right? A neutral mindset is very, 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 very healthy because it helps control the ups and downs. It doesn't mean you're going to be numb to life. <laughs> That's not a healthy mindset. But with a neutral mindset, you, you can enjoy the highs, but understand that you have to continue to work to keep the high. The high didn't come from nothing. It came from you working. So you got to keep working to enjoy the high. But you can also learn from the lows. The lows don't cause you to quit. Because you knew they were possible. So when they come, you just learn from it. What can I learn from these moments, right? You stay focused on what you can control. And you control it with progressive improvement. That's what neutral mindset allows is I'm, I'm seeing something. What am I doing? Can I keep this up? If I want more, I'll do more. It's a very matter of fact approach. And that is the best way to approach it, is just factual. It just is what it is. Whatever comes your way, it is what it is. You enjoy it if it's a high, but you keep working so you can keep the high. You learn from it if it's a low, so that way if it comes again, it doesn't have as much of an impact on you. You can kind of defend against it a little bit better. But at the end of the day, if you want more, you got to keep putting in more, so you just keep working. You stay proactive. You don't have to be perfect, but you do have to improve if you want continual improvement. If I want to keep seeing progress, i got to sustain the efforts I'm putting in. And then over time, I do have to continue to improve those efforts if I want to continue to improve the outcome. So maybe I've been doing 10 out of 14 days accurate. I wonder if I can get to 11. I wonder if I can get to 12. Maybe a 12 out of 14 if I'm just tracking calories, protein, sugars, and distribution is there a way I could be a little more precise? Is there a certain type of protein that would be better at one time versus another? What's my balance of carbs and fats? Do I have carbs at the right time, fats at the right time? You can start to look into more of the details if you want to continue to push improvements. But a healthy mindset is a neutral mindset. It is what it is. You stay action-focused, solution focused and you value small progress because all progress is small so this was a short one but i wanted to throw this out there give you some uh, mental uh, stuff to work through <laughs> and just think of how you approach your situations of how you approach life how you approach your goals do you approach it with a negative mindset expecting to fail and then therefore you fail often do you expect it? Do you approach it with uh, an overly positive mindset, expecting everything to be perfect? And then when it isn't, it causes you to quit and become unmotivated. Or can you learn to approach your goals with a neutral mindset and say, "I'm going to do what I can do. When something comes my way that I didn't expect, I'm going to learn from it, and that will help me improve what I do, and I'll be able to continue to improve my progress. If I want it." i got to work for it, and the work that I put in has to slowly improve over time if I want my progress to continue to improve over time. Awesome. Well, if you have any questions, if you need anything, reach out on the website, www.brutalirongym.com. You can always message me there. On the bottom of the homepage is the contact form. Send me any questions you want. We also have a ton of free information for nutrition and training on the website, so go check that out as well. And we also have our services if you want to check those out. But if you need anything, you can always message me from the website, www.brutalirongym.com. If you like the podcast, please share the podcast. If you like the podcast, please consider donating to support the podcast, which you can do on the website. And if you like the information we share in the podcast, you can find more from us on our social media channels. You can find us and follow us on Instagram and YouTube 
under the name Brutal Iron Jim. As always, I hope this was helpful, and thank you for listening.